Well guys, the Halverson HWP100 that you've seen me demo in a couple videos here needs to go back to its owner. It arrived with about 14 hours on it. It's gonna leave with just under 19. So that means I put five hours on, the, on this machine, putting it through its paces, doing a bunch of different size wood. We did a couple cords worth of wood during that time. I think I filled a total of seven crates of my IBC totes. So that would be, it's about a quarter cord per crate. So we did about a cord and three quarters. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a final review here. What I think about this machine and who I think this machine would be a good fit for. We spent a good chunk of one morning running small logs through this, almost exclusively. It was a lot of five to seven or eight inch logs. And for smaller logs like that, this thing really flies. So on to your feedback on this machine. In previous videos, you guys have left some comments and I wanted to make sure I addressed a couple of those things. The first of which is the log lift here, which more than one person commented that, that it looks a little aggressive or a little unnerving when you raise the log lift and the logs come flying down, kind of the little ramp that it creates and it slams right into this support beam here, which is, this is pretty beefy. This is here to stop the log from rolling. Uh, I'm reasonably confident this isn't going anywhere. And if this happens to bend or something over time, I'm sure it could be bent back. So as far as like the durability of the machine and handling those logs rolling down, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that it's gonna be okay, but it can be a little unsettling seeing those logs fly down. And what I found is that it's a lot easier to manage one log at a time on the ramp or on the log lift rather than stack it up with several. I thought I was gonna be able to stack it up with more than one and roll down, but it's really difficult to just roll down one at a time. And more often than not, I would just, if I had more than one log up there, I would roll it down by hand. As for the controls, everything in here, even though there's no labels or anything, is pretty intuitive and pretty easy to get used to. Now, one person commented in a previous video that you're standing way too close to all the heat that's being generated by this machine. The oil tank heats up after the oil gets moving. The exhaust for the engine is right here. The engine is right next to it. And as an operator, you're right here next to all of those things. And the first time I ran this, it was a reasonably cool day and I didn't really notice it too much and it didn't bother me. But another day I ran it, it was in the 80s and it was noticeable, especially the exhaust, the heat from the exhaust here. Some of you might have noticed when I was operating the machine, I usually did it with my left hand and that wasn't because I was trying to get away from the heat of the engine. I am actually left-handed and it was very easy for me to watch what was happening down there at the splitter while using the controls with my left hand. If you're right-handed, that's gonna situate you much closer to the engine and the heat that's being generated by this machine. If you're doing all your wood splitting in the winter time, that's probably a good thing. You got your own built-in little personal heater right there. So I mentioned in previous videos and demonstrating this that it has a four-way wedge. This is a wedge that does not need to be removed. It can drop down and it's level with this tray here and you can use it as a single wedge as well. But uh, this four-way wedge is definitely designed for smaller wood. It is relatively low to the platform even in its highest setting. So if you're running logs that are six, seven inches, perfect for this, for this size wedge. Anything bigger, you're gonna end up with some larger pieces above the wedge that are likely going to need to be resplit. And that's what I ran into a lot. It would be nice if we could get a little bit more height out of this four-way wedge. And then that would just give us a little bit more flexibility as you go into those eight, nine, 10 inch logs, give you more flexibility in how you decide to break those up. If you're doing heating wood and you want much larger chunks of wood, um, you know, you could probably do what you wanna do with the way that it's set up. But for what I do with a lot of recreational wood, a lot of bundle wood, I'm going for a lot of smaller splits. And the way this machine is set up, it's just not ideal especially when you get into those larger logs that are 10, 11, 12 inches. Another comment on this machine I think needs to be addressed is just the way that it works. So a log rests on this little cradle here and you're constantly sliding logs on this cradle or sliding the cradle under the log depending on exactly what you're doing. And that could create some wear on this tray and this might be something that might wear out over time. 
This is pretty thick metal and Halverson has been making machines just like this for quite a while. I think this is pretty field tested. That doesn't necessarily concern me, but since it was brought up as a, at a, as a previous comment, I wanted to make sure to address it. Now this machine does have less than 20 hours on it, but you can look there and the wear on this is pretty minimal. How long does that saw chain last? That's another question I got. And I don't have a definitive answer, but so far it seems like it lasts like any other chainsaw chain would. And that's gonna largely depend on the what you're sawing and how clean it is. Some of the logs I ran through this were pretty dirty and I put noticeable wear on that chain in the couple hours that I ran it. And I did actually take my uh, steel two-in-one sharpener to the bar. I didn't remove the, the chain from the bar, but I just went ahead and made a few swipes and touched up the chain. And uh, the last time I ran it, I ran it with the sharpened chain and it was noticeably quicker. So the, the couple hours that I put on it, I definitely put some wear on the chain. And I think, you know, that's what you can expect, especially if you're running some dirty wood, you're probably only gonna get a couple hours out of it before you feel like you wanna touch it up. There are some guys that I've heard with some of these uh, bar machine, bar saw machines that they're getting, you know, four to six cords out of it before they uh, sharpen or ch swap out the chain. And that wouldn't surprise me, especially if the wood is pretty clean. So is this the right machine for me? You can probably tell the way that I've talked about it a little bit. I'm thinking no, at least not the way it sits right now and not with the other equipment that I have around here. Because the machine just has a four-way wedge, we can't swap that out for any kind of larger wedge. And this machine doesn't have enough strength really to push anything through a larger wedge. Uh, the wood that I get is all different sizes from you know 20 inches or sometimes even greater down to four or five inches. I split everything. If it's bigger than my forearm, I split it. And you know, this machine does great on all the smaller stuff, but as it sits, this machine is not a replacement of my wolf ridge. And I really couldn't justify having this machine on site and keeping the wolf ridge. My operation just isn't big enough for that yet. What this machine needs, if it was going to be perfect for my operation, and I know my business is not like a lot of other people's out there who do firewood, but if it was perfect for me, it would have a little bit more splitting force. It would be able to handle a six-way wedge. It would have a sorting table on the other side of the wedge so that if we needed to handle any resplits, we had a place to do that, to grab them and move them. And then I would also need a conveyor, which I'm kind of almost to the point where I need to justify a conveyor anyway, uh, even just using my wolf ridge. But this machine uh, would really shine if you had a way to move the wood away from the splitter as you're going. As it sits, the splitter is pretty low to the ground and your pile around the end of that splitter gets pretty big in a hurry and you need to drag the splitter out of the way of the wood that you're splitting or you need to move the wood get that cleaned up so who is this machine for well halverson's website says it's for homeowners who do one to ten cords a year now if i was on the low end of that one two three cords a year i don't think i could justify a machine of this caliber it's a nice machine and at fifteen thousand dollars in 2024 money uh, that's kind of a lot for just a couple of cords of wood a year, I think. Uh, but you know, people can choose to make whatever purchasing decision they want. But at least on Halverson's website, that's who they say this machine is for, homeowners. If you're a smaller commercial firewood operator and you have a conveyor, this machine could serve you really well if you have a large supply of pulp wood size hardwood logs to fly through this machine. If you had five to eight inch logs, I think this thing could just do really, really well. And with minimal effort, you could do a cord or two a day and, you know, have a really nice little operation. The wood I've been getting has been all mixed sizes. And I don't know of anyone in the market who supplies just smaller size wood, though uh, I'm sure with a little research I could find it. But that's really what it would take for this machine to shine is just a large supply of smaller diameter logs. So this machine will do 12, 14 inch stuff too. So if you get mixed wood, you just know what you're getting into. A lot of 12 to 14 inch stuff you're gonna have to run through with a single wedge. And if it has a lot of knots, it might not run through this machine at all. So just know what you're getting into. And as long as you're prepared for that, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this nice American-made Halverson HWP 100.
I need to load this machine up on the trailer now because it needs to get down the road to Big Island, Virginia, where Reeves Timber is located. Thanks to them again for lending this machine. Their contact info is in the video's description. If you're looking for Halverson or Timberwolf products, they are the dealer for Timberwolf and Halverson for Virginia and the neighboring states. So come on down, check them out, see their machines and their inventory. They can get you set up pretty good. All right, if there's anything I left out, you let me know and I'll follow up with whatever I need to. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.